there we go. Oh my God, that is actually, oh, that's cool. Well, that's a big box and not a very cheap box either. This thing is literally $130 for this set, but thankfully it was sent to me from the company to do a review and unboxing of, and I'm very excited for this because I actually knew what this was before the company contacted me. I saw this mainly because the actual blasters looked so freaking cool and I was like, ooh, that's cool. And then I saw the price tag and went, oh, nope, not gonna happen. I don't really think I can afford that right now, but Luckily for me, they contacted me and said, hey, do you want to do a review of our product? And I said, yes, because I was actually really interested in this. This is Recoil. The world is now game. Uh, maybe uh, the world is now a game? The game? Something? I, that does not seem like proper grammar to me, but what, whatever. This is a, totally a laser tag set. Now, it's kind of the futuristic evolution of laser tag. It's supposed to be way, way better than laser tag. And I did a quick Google search on what people were, you know, reviewing these things, and they reviewed very highly. So I actually have quite big impressions for what this thing's going to be because it's, it's doing the whole augmented reality connect to your phone and stuff like that. But there are a couple of really neat features that I like. And this is the starter set, which includes two of the pistols, the RK-45, what is that, the Spitfire, which is, uh, they look vaguely like the Atlas 45s from Call of Duty, and a wireless game hub. It comes with its own Wi-Fi router that everything connects to, which is freaking sweet. It's supposed to have like a 500 foot range or something like that, and all sorts of things. Like the reason why it's called Recoil is because they actually have haptic feedback inside the blasters themselves, which are supposed to simulate recoil. Something Nerf had vaguely done in the past. But, well, hopefully this is better. Because, uh, I mean, the Nerf Tiger electronic laser tag stuff, while really, really cool, is, again, just kind of like the toy grade, you know, laser tag. You can't really do a whole lot with them. This is supposed to be something entirely freaking different. If I flip this box over, and it is a massive box, you can kind of see what's going on here. It's trying to become a real-life first-person shooter. And there is a market for this, and maybe the technology has finally got to the point where this is entirely possible. But yes, you do have a phone holder, so you can put your very, very expensive phone right next to your blaster, which is your HUD. It shows you, like, where other people are and airstrikes and stuff like that. Yeah, there's, like, literally kill streaks and stuff in this. It's absolutely insane. And again, 500-foot radius. Like, you, you place down the hub, and it goes, like, 250 feet in every direction. That's insanity. And then, yes, everything connects to the phone, and there are power-ups and ammo and stuff like that. There's even other things you can buy. Like, this set does come with two of the pistols and the Wi-Fi game hub, and then some headphones and some dock connectors and stuff like that. But the actual, you can go and buy a rifle, which looks really freaking cool. That's something that you can get with this. You can also get frag grenades that actually do stuff, like, with this and... I, that's just insanity to me. The only comment I have about the whole rifle thing is that they kind of list stats for the weapons. I don't know if they do it on this box, but I have seen... Oh, there we go. There's the rifle and the pistol in question. Uh, no, it doesn't do it, but in, in their advertisements, they show, like, stats, and the rifle is literally better than these in every single way, which is kind of silly to me. I think that every weapon should have a use, and no weapon should just completely, you know, dominate. And, that, I mean, that's an obvious balancing problem, and, of course... If some guy brings up the, you know, oh, I spent $20 extra and bought the rifle, then you would feel kind of cheapened because they just basically paid a one. I mean, yeah, you could be better with a little pistol, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a not very fun thing to me, but hopefully that's something that they look at in the future. But it has physical recoil, precision firing, 3D positional audio. That's something I'm very interested in because I play a lot of games like PUBG and Rust and stuff like that. And if this can nail like, oh, I'm being shot at from this direction and I can hear the bullets whizzing past me, that's gonna be really, really cool. I'm very, very interested in how that works out. And it says first person shooting with up to 16 players. So you can have 16 people connected to one game hub. And then you just download the app, which I've already done. I haven't even started it yet, but yeah, it's available on both Apple Store and Google Play. I have both phones. I'll probably just be using my iPhone for this one, though. But this is very interesting. Again, not physical projectiles, but if you can... It even has, like, voice chat and stuff through the headphones and everything. It's 
it's a really, really crazy cool idea, and for the $130 price tag, I'm really hoping this pans out. I'm super, super excited for this, and while they did send me this to review, the opinions are completely my own, so I, I really hope this lives up to the hype. I am gonna actually unbox this thing, because it's been taunting me for a day now, and that is uh, something I cannot tolerate. All right, what lives in the box? Can I? <laughs> Well, some more cardboard. Oh, no, I lost the, the instructions. Well, this is interesting. So I, I'm it's upside down so I can read it because again, I haven't really prefaced this all that much. But it comes with damage sensors, phone mounts, AR tags for indoor play. So obviously if you're indoors, the GPS kind of system. Yeah, this is GPS powered, by the way. That's why it can work so cool. That's why I'm really excited for it. I forgot to mention that. But yeah. Uh, for indoor play, so you can use the AR tags for that, so you can put power-ups places, uh, the re the Spitfire pistols, and I wonder if you can dual wield them. I, I wonder if that's a thing that can happen, because that would be cool. That would make it actually better than the, the Rogue, the SR-12 Rogue, which you can see right here. Very cool looking. This stuff looks very, very nice. I, it's very Destiny slash Titanfall 2 inspired. Phone mounts, damage sensors, AR tags, quick start guide. Uh, oh, here's the actual things. Oh, they're slightly bent already. So they're just sheets of paper. Augmented reality stuff. So I'm guessing you scan them with your phone in the game. But yeah, you can mount phones and everything to it. And yep, you have to put batteries. How many batteries? Well, four per blaster and then freaking, yeah, uh, four of them for the Wi-Fi game pod. Twelve batteries total. That is a lot of batteries. I really hope the ones I picked up actually work, because I just grabbed random ones from my garage. Well, that's cool. Let's actually see what this entails. Da -na 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 oh, I'm going to open it this way. Wow, that's actually not bad presentation, although everything's just kind of, you know, plastic tied down. Oh, those look really freaking cool. All right, well, I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Sorry about that, something just caught my eye. The sights on these things are actually like gun sights, the, uh, like a true glow sight. I don't know if you can see that. They're, uh, very luminescent. Huh. Well, I can tell you right away, these things are very, very comfortable. Oh my god, there's literally a GoPro mount on the bottom of this thing. You can literally mount your GoPro to the bottom of your blaster, no problem. Oh, oh god, one man should not have this much power. Uh, plastic quality, very good, very, very solid in the hand. There are some minor imperfections here and there on the blasters where some... Uh, I'm guessing when they came off some kind of molding process, there's little chips and stuff in just very little minor places, but other than that, very good. Triggers feel great. And then they've got this kind of like Xboxy style thing on the side. And yes, you could mount your fold holders to either side of the blaster, and there are infrared emitters all over these things. There are phone holders, and these should work with I'm guessing pretty much anything. I wonder how, I mean, how thick could this possibly get? Well, that's about as wide as it will get, which is uh, pretty freaking wide. Let's grab my iPhone here. I mean, yeah, that will fit, I'm guessing, pretty much any big phablet or phone you want to stuff in there. So, and they will mount left or right on the blaster itself, which is good. Okay, well, I'm gonna connect all this stuff together and throw some batteries in it, and we'll see what they actually do. Holy crap! Oh, that's... That's actually pretty rad. I'm guessing these are just movable. Oh, there we go. 
Oh my god, that is actually... Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing these batteries won't last very long, because these are dollar store batteries, and these things are obviously doing some very interesting stuff, but that is cool. Okay, let's power everything else up, like, uh, well, the wireless router here. Press the power button and wait for the green light. Extend antenna. For the best results, elevate the game hub three to five feet off. You'll need to connect to the game hub using your phone's Wi-Fi connection. Press the power button and wait for the green light. join and select teams their battle ids will show up here you can drag players to balance teams place the game hub in the center of the battlefield when ready stand next to it and tap the screen to set its location trooper move to a suitable area to set base gps locations I'm impressed. It actually works. And I mean, I, I should expect it to work. It says what it does, but it literally actually does every single thing it set out to do, which is mind blowing. So this is the closest thing I've really seen so far to playing a first person shooter in real life. It's kind of hard to get into if you have zero imagination because there's no imminent threat there's no, like, you see things whizzing past you, you're getting hit by stuff, there's none of that. It's all digital. So if you can't do, you know, things like, uh, you know, laser tag because of that, then this is not going to be anything you're going to want to get into. But it is a little bit helpful since you have headphones, or at least the audio from your phone, to tell you what's going on. To do things like telling you when you get hit, it will make sounds when bullets whiz past you and stuff like that. It will tell you where power-ups are on the field. There is a narrator, there's two of them. There's a female voice that's like your operator and then there's like a sergeant dude that is the constant narrator of the entire thing. Both are very good. There's no real cheesy lines. There's nothing that made me cringe or groan or anything like that. It worked really well and that will help you get into the game a little bit more than just having something that goes pew pew and maybe makes a noise when you get hit. In fact, it's not very often that like you feel like you got hit, but when you're wearing the headphones and stuff like that, it makes like the Call of Duty or Rust or any kind of first person shooter hit marker sound when you get hit. Not the same thing, but it's very close. It makes a hit marker sound when you kill someone, it will tell you the player has been killed, which is really cool. So you can tell when you land shots and stuff like that, although with it being infrared, it feels like I'm shooting beach balls towards my opponent because I don't have to be all that accurate in order to land shots and by default the Spitfire here is a machine pistol so if you just hold down the trigger it's full auto it fires and it's really freaking cool the recoil function I was that was probably the thing I was the most skeptical about and it works really well it's a little more telling if you look at my my phone it works, it feels good when you're firing it. 
it honestly, that's, it's rad. These are, by default, these are 30 rounds. You reload like that. And you have limited ammo, and you have to seek more ammo as you're running around the field. There are ammo things that will pop up. There are things like heavy armor, airstrikes, all that kind of stuff. It's really fun, and you can tweak all these options in the game settings when you're playing it. There are skirmish, which is like a free-for-all. There's a uh, team deathmatch or team, team skirmish. There's also kill confirmed, or no, search and destroy. Search and destroy was the other one they had which isn't available yet. I assume that's gonna be just like Call of Duty. It's gonna be some kind of, maybe like a Counter-Strike kind of setup. Maybe they're gonna have some kind of bomb object that comes out, which would be really cool. Uh, Skyrocket, I believe, is the company that makes this. If you wanna make a billion trillion dollars, you will instantly dump your time and effort into making some kind of player unknown Battlegrounds, Hunger Games, Battle Royale system for this. Uh, hello? Do that right now. You will make a billion trillion dollars because you already have the hub, which has a massive range, and the phone itself with a little map will GPS show you where everything's going on, so as you're walking around, you can actually sweep and see a red dot where an enemy was at some point. It will show you that kind of stuff. You can easily have like a zone and have the zone, you know, move in and kill people outside the zone and stuff like that. Hello, do that. You will become the biggest thing ever, I mean, you, you need to put that out within like the next six months or you're just, that's the, that's the silliest thing that's leaving money on the table at this point. But speaking of money, that's where most of the negatives come forth. The set for two of the, well, they look like Atlas 45s, but two of the Spitfire RK45s and the Wi-Fi hub, the extra targets, they plug into the bottom of the controller here, you clip them via the, the back of your shirt, which I would recommend, or in your back pocket or something, so if somebody shoots you from a different angle, it can detect that. That comes with two of those, and the phone holders, and it's $130, which I think is way too much money, and it gets even worse when you look at things like extra ones of these by themselves are $50. And then if you go out and buy, let's say, the Assault Rifle, the Rogue, the 120 Rogue, SR-125, I can't even remember, that is $70. Frag Grenade, a single Frag Grenade, granted it's reusable, that is $15, bucks, which isn't honestly that bad, but if they could bring the price down, like $35 bucks max for the pistol, $50 for the rifle, I think you could do a lot better. I think people would be a lot more receptive. The price, even though this works, is way too high. And again, I kind of hinted on this a little bit earlier, but the specs of the rifle in terms of gameplay, like the ammo capacity, range, accuracy, firepower, are all superior to this thing. Which you can argue, oh, well, rifle is better than a pistol in every way anyway. I get that, but from a gameplay perspective, that's not fun. If I can just go spend more money to win better, then there's kind of no reason to ever pick one of these up unless I just don't have the money for it. Speaking of which, I want to see an ability to dual wield these as a single unit. I uh, really hope that's a thing that will come out, but it's going to probably be impossible since Bluetooth can't really connect to multiple devices at once, and the guns are Bluetooth connected, so maybe consider putting out like dually versions of some kind of pistol that you can use with this. I, the, the, the biggest thing that I have for this entire setup is that the future of it is pretty crazy. If they, if they aggressively go towards what they're working on, they put out new game modes, they advertise it well, they put out new weapons and power-ups and stuff like that, this could be something huge because it works really, really well. It could be massive. It's a lot more fun even in just like this thing that I've ever had it, even like a laser tag arena, which I've been to before, where you have to put on the vest and do all that stuff, and they have like target targets they have to shoot that's like the enemy bases and stuff like that. This was comparable to that. It does use your phone, uh, so battery is an issue on the phone, as well as the battery in the actual blaster itself, because that reciprocating, that haptic feedback they have going on with the actual blaster, sucks down batteries like none other. And for $130, I would fully expect these things to have built-in rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, which they don't. They're all AA powered, and maybe some people like that. Some people prefer the fact that like the Xbox One controllers are, you know, they run off AA's. I personally hate it. I'd rather have something that I can just recharge by plugging it in or putting it on the stand, like what the PS4 controllers do, even though they don't have as long as battery life. I mean, 
it's really aggravating, that's the thing. I, I Again, every single complaint I have basically goes down to the price point. And the fit and finish on the guns, while they are very, very solid, there's little minor things that annoy the crap out of me, like the sight is misaligned, and I guess it's supposed to be adjustable. I undid all the screws and I couldn't figure it out. There is an elevation thing, which I don't even understand why you would ever need that, but even undoing all the screws and trying to tweak it, I could not get it to move, and it's clearly misaligned. It does that with both of the guns that I have, which are very, very annoying. This honestly feels pretty cheap and flimsy. Uh, not very good, but it's what it is. You just place it down and forget it. Uh, hopefully you don't have people in the middle of a match picking it up and running it somewhere. That would be really annoying, but it works. I mean, that's the biggest thing. If you are, if you're thinking like, I want to do something like this and money almost isn't an option, 130 bucks is technically worth it. I'm not going to say it's not worth it because it does do everything it sets out to do with more features coming down the line. Like then it doesn't even have like a dedicated indoor mode right now. It says coming soon. So that kind of sucks. But the fact that it does what it wants to and it does it well can justify that $130 price tag. I think it's when you want to do more than just this, if you want to buy more blasters, that's when you're going to run into problems. And I think the biggest barrier of entry is that if somebody wants to buy one of the blasters and play, which is cool, uh, they don't need to have the hub per se. If one of their friends has the hub or one or two of their friends have the hub, then they're totally justified in doing that. But uh, like, thankfully you can play with just a phone, which is weird. You can totally do that, which is like a teaser for, hey, you want to go pick up the cool gun and do the cool gun thing. There's a lot to love here, especially the fact that it has like a GoPro mount on the front of it. They knew what their audience was. And I can imagine even using like the built-in camera on your phone for stuff. I mean, there is a bright future for this if they do it right. And I'm really hoping this doesn't go the way of the Dodo because this is a cool little thing. It works well, hits seem to register just fine. It still has the problem where if you are standing here like this and let's say I'm behind a car or something and my gun is pointed down and somebody shoots me, nothing will happen. So I recommend using those tags and putting them like back here or something like that. So if somebody's chest is above something, they can still get hit. I mean, you can clip it anywhere. So if somebody's cheating like that, you can be like, hey, put it on your headphones or something like that. I was blown away by the 3D positioning audio, by the way, it worked perfectly fine. I was. There's a lot of things to like here. I'm kind of rambling at this point because I wasn't expecting this to work. I, I was very cynical and it worked perfectly fine. So let me know what you think about the whole recoil system down in the comment section below. What do you think about the look of the blasters? Do you think you plan on getting one at some point? If a friend had the system, would you go out and buy one of the guns to play with them even though you don't own a gun? Like you could go out and buy, oh, I want to go buy the assault rifle for 70 bucks. I don't have this, the game thing but I can still use my gun and join their game. Let me know if you think there's might be an issue if you have an older iPhone than an iPhone 6 that well, I, I was assume an iPhone 5 and stuff would work fine, but maybe you have an old one, maybe you have an iPod Touch, an older version of that, which wouldn't work. That's a very real concern. I would very much encourage you to at least check the app store, see if the app would work on your phone and then leave a comment down below so we can kind of compile a list of what will work and what won't. But man, is it cool. I actually really do dig it, so. Thank you very much to Recoil for giving me a chance to check these things out because I did see them ahead of time and I did like what I saw and I'm blown away by how they work. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. I think this was pretty freaking different. So who knows what's next?